Let's bring in Tiffany Wilding. She's managing director and an economist at PIMCO. Great to have you back with us, Tiffany. What's your current assessment of uh, the road ahead on interest rates in Canada, uh, especially in light of this uh, latest decision for the Bank of Canada? Yeah, um, so I thought the shift in tone um, from from Governor Tiff at, uh, at the press conference um, was was very much in line with our expectations that they will look to uh, to start to ease policy around the middle of this year, um, you know, and, and ultimately continue to ease policy in the back half of this year um, as a result of the fact that, you know, Canadian growth has been stagnant, slightly contractionary. Um, this is despite the large amount, uh, large inflows of immigrants that we've seen, if you look on a per capita basis, uh, you know, consumption growth, for example, is actually has has contracted. You know, that's obviously because you are seeing monetary policy being passed on, uh, you know, to the economy through through higher actual interest rates that people are paying on their mortgages uh, and other debt. So at this point, um, you know, with inflation, you know, moving back towards target, the unemployment rate moving up, we think the Bank of Canada will be comfortable enough to start to ease around mid-year. And do you see a distinct difference between the Canadian and American economies right now? Yeah, uh, the, the difference is, <laughs> has been not only distinct, but I, I would say incredible. The U.S. economy, um, despite the fact that, you know, that Canada has been, you know, stagnant growth this year, rising unemployment, uh, the U.S. economy has uh, remained incredibly strong. So we saw 3% growth last year from the U.S., uh, you know, and that growth momentum looks like it's, uh, you know, translated into a strong start to the year uh, for 2024 as well. For the U.S., for example, we were tracking final domestic demand growth in the first quarter of 3%. And if that happens, that'll be three consecutive quarters of 3% or above, which we haven't seen absent, you know, outside of the pandemic uh, recovery. We haven't seen that since 2024. Uh, similarly, in the United States, not surprisingly, the inflation news has just not been as good. Uh, if you have above uh, potential growth, which we think we're getting in the U.S., you know, then then that suggests that inflation should be reaccelerating. You know, and I think that's the kind of news that we're getting out of the inflation data in the United States. You know, so interestingly, we think the data flow uh, in the first half of this year is is probably more consistent with the Federal Reserve that's maybe not hiking interest rates at the middle of this year. Maybe they're delaying. Uh, it looks like more likely they will be delayed until the back half of the year now. Okay, so it is feasible that we have an environment where in the first half of 2024, the U.S. Federal Reserve doesn't make a move on rates, but the Bank of Canada does. Yeah, you know, and, and I don't think, you know, usually um, historically you've seen uh, these central banks, you know, move in lockstep, but that's not always the case. Uh, and you can see a wedge, you know, what we call like a wedge between, uh, you know, the two policy rates of the two economies. And I think that wedge is entirely appropriate, just given the increasing divergence, you know, in economic outcomes that we're also seeing from these two economies. So we think, again, um, you know, at this point, uh, the Bank of Canada, you know, can still feel comfortable starting to cut interest rates. You know, as as Tiff suggested, maybe it's it's a little bit slower than you would cut interest rates if you actually had a recession in the economy, a deeper recession. But nevertheless, you know, there is genuine weakness in the Canadian economy here uh, that warrants easing, in our view. If I had to put you on the spot, because you you've given us a bit of a roadmap here, and nothing change. If if if, if the environment, we're working with what we can work with this moment. Um, but uh, if you had to make a call right now on what the U.S. does in terms of overall policy, do they do they ultimately move in the later part of the year, and how much do they move, and and, and how much specifically does the Bank of Canada move? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, so so we think the Bank of Canada still has room to move 75, 100 basis points in the back half of this year. The Fed, on the other hand, um, you know, I, I do think that we we think the Fed will go out of their way to look apolitical. Um, they are an apolitical institution, but that just means that the election calendar, you know, still can uh, can be a little bit tricky in terms of the timing for when they want to pivot policy. You know, I, I think the SEP for the Federal Reserve was projecting three uh, three cuts. This this year, uh, we definitely think that moves up um, to maybe even one cut uh, this year from the Fed. You know, obviously, depending on the data, it looks more reasonable to us. And then delaying that uh, until after uh, mid-year uh, also looks reasonable, just given the inflation data that we've seen over the last uh, you know couple of months. Okay.